Today in the battle arena, Iron Man versus Kang the Conqueror, the new big bad in the MCU, and a guy with a real fancy suit of tech and armor versus the OG founder of the MCU, and the OG guy with the real fancy suit of tech and armor. So, who's coming out on top here? Who's stronger? Who's more powerful? Who's got the better suit? Who wins? That's what we're going to find out. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danco. We do fight breakdowns every week, plus the occasional power ranking video like this one or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, we'll sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, go hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Now let's get to it. You think you can beat me? I am Kay! I... And let's talk about Iron Man. Let's talk about Tony. For starting out as just a genius in a cave with a box of scraps, Tony really did well for himself. He really kept on upping the ante and raising the bar to the point where he's able to take on literal gods and monsters and finally genocidal alien warlords. And it's the last one that I really want to focus in on. The Mark 50 Iron Man armor is completely made out of nanotech, millions and millions of little nanobots, which really allows Tony so much versatility and creativity to the point where he could almost do anything he wants or can dream of. It does allow him to create some pretty great weapons. He can form swords and shields, turn his arms into energy cannons, shoot out powerful energy blasts or launch missile barrages, or even big old explosions, and all of this is enough to make Thanos bleed. Just a little drop of blood, but still, this was something that Hulk couldn't do. Thor wasn't able to do the first time around, it was Iron Man. And that's just his weapons and all that, which does give him a ton of versatility, but he's also pretty physically powerful. He's able to square off against Cole Obsidian, stun him with some punches, a guy who can take on the Hulkbuster, and even knock around Thanos a little bit. I mean, not a ton, not like an insane amount, but he did it. Where Iron Man might have everyone beat though is, surprisingly enough, durability. So he took an absolute beating from Thanos, but not just Thanos, even from Cole Obsidian. Cole launched Iron Man across part of New York and through buildings, and Iron Man wasn't taken out of the fight, it wasn't even really phased. Kinda looked like he was more just surprised about how he ended up several blocks over. But it's really just one feat in particular, the moon launch. So Thanos has had just about enough of these annoying little heroes, and so he decides He's just going to end it all right here. Winds up, grabs the Power Stone and the Space Stone, and proceeds to launch a full-on moon down on top of all of them. Iron Man is able to dip and weave through a lot of the debris, only to be smashed by one big meteor and crash down beneath the planet's surface. Now, for the longest time, I thought this was Thanos breaking apart the moon with the Power Stone, and then teleporting it down to the planet with the Space Stone, sending it through a portal. However, now I'm convinced that that's not the case at all. For starters, Joe Russo said that what Thanos was doing here was using the Power Stone to break apart the moon, then using the Space Stone to quickly pull it down to the surface of Titan. All that blue isn't a portal, it's just meteors moving at insane speeds. You can see that more clearly in the early VFX shots. That shows what I'm talking about here. And that also explains why the rocks were flaming. So, no portal, just Thanos pulling them with the Space Stone. The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves. Sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. You're an Avenger. Have I killed you before? Nathaniel Richards was a scientist from the 31st century. 
to discover the existence of the multiverse and all his alternate variants. But unlike most of his other selves, Kang believed that time was fundamentally broken, and so went about trying to repair it. Only him trying to repair the multiverse looked a whole lot like destroying entire timelines and conquering as many worlds as possible, earning him the name Kang the Conqueror. He started the multiversal war, but was eventually defeated by his alternate selves and exiled out of time and space. But now he's back. Kang is operating entirely with tech that is way beyond our comprehension, centuries more advanced than anything we've seen on Earth. He's got some pretty great energy attacks, energy attacks that could honestly put Iron Man to shame. Like I'm talking just instantly vaporize a dozen people, not even leave ash or smoke behind. He can also use it to unleash just an energy wave all around him, which is powerful enough to knock out Scott and Cassie when they're both in giant form. And then all that energy power also applies to his shields, which are honestly just some pretty dang impressive shields. They could hold back Ant-Man, a whole army of super ants, and laser blast. Of course, it's not like impenetrable, some ants were beginning to make their way through, but it's still pretty dang impressive. Then even when people do land hits on Kang, it's not like they actually do all that much. I mean, he was able to take quite a bit of shots from Wasp to the face without any armor or tech. And when he had armor and tech, took a few full-on punches from Giant Man. And remember, Scott can do this, the same thing that Hulk can do. So those punches were no joke. Then King also has got telekinesis, which is able to use on Ant-Man, on Cassie. He sent Modok flying with just a flick. Then in some of the craziest telekinesis I've ever seen, Kang takes an energy blast and redirects it, takes control of it, and shoots it straight back at the dude. Now Kang has some other tech like portals and little floating energy steps and things like that, but the biggest thing he's got going for him is the hype. The hype. He's beaten other Kangs, he's killed more Avengers than he can remember, including Thor's. He's even busted planets and destroyed entire timelines. The dude is no joke. So, who wins here? Who's coming out on top? Well, first off, let me just say what a shame we won't be able to actually see this fight. I mean, maybe a variant of Tony or something. But Thanos made sure that this Tony wasn't coming around again. But we can still see who'd win. So physically, I think Iron Man has the edge here, at least when it comes to strength. Because honestly, I don't think Kang appeared to be that strong. And maybe that's just because he doesn't really throw many punches around. I mean, busting up rocks and beating up on Ant-Man is impressive, but that was all done after his armor was already all busted. When he had his tech, he was more about shooting energy blast than throwing hits. Meanwhile, Iron Man can fight against Colipsidian and Thanos, knock them around, even draw some blood. And I would say getting one drop of blood out of Thanos is probably way harder to do than giving Scott Lang a bloody nose. Iron Man should be a bit stronger. Durability though might be around the same. I mean, like I said earlier, Kang took punches from Giant Man. Giant Man is roughly just as strong as Phase 1 Hulk. Giant Man even killed Colipsidian all by himself. Colipsidian is directly on par with the Hulk Buster armor. And on top of that, Kang was just threatening Scott's daughter. That's probably the angriest and strongest that Scott's been in a good long while. Scott is pretty dang strong, and Kang took his best punches. Meanwhile, Iron Man took the best punches that Thanos could dish out, which is definitely a win. Yeah, for as powerful as Giant Man is, Thanos is always going to be more powerful. 
So taking punches from Thanos is always going to be more impressive. But that might be where Iron Man's advantages stop. Because for as great as Tony's tech is, Kang's tech is better. Like Rocket said, Tony is a genius on Earth. Kang is a genius from the 31st century, who's been traveling across the multiverse and all the timelines for who knows how long. His tech is better. He's got energy shields that can take a whole barrage of all sorts of attacks. And sure, Iron Man can block attacks on the Power Stone with a shield, but still think you gotta give the edge to Kang on that one. That shield took a whole lot of damage all around it. Okay, so then his Energy Blast. These things vaporize normal people, or whatever you wanna call these things. But against actual superheroes, well, it just kind of knocks them down, turns them back to normal size, but definitely doesn't knock them out. Now, this is definitely still impressive. I mean, Ant-Man can take a whole heck of a lot of energy blast and not be knocked back to normal size. So the fact that Kang can do it in one blast is impressive. Shows the blast is strong. But I guess my point is that it doesn't instantly vaporize everyone, but it could definitely mess Iron Man up. Of course, then there's the telekinesis too. If he wanted to, just wiggle his fingers and Tony goes flying. He's already struggled a bit against a telekinetic before. I don't want to completely discount Iron Man here. He's got a crazy suit of armor, a suit that can completely adapt to any situation and form any weapon that he can think of. He can form swords and shields, turn his arms into energy cannons, shoot up powerful energy blasts, or launch missile barrages, even big old explosions. However, here's the catch. Iron Man's suit is made out of nanotech, and it's a ticking time bomb, essentially. Whenever the suit gets messed up, nanobots are destroyed, there is only a finite number of nanobots until the suit stops functioning altogether. Of course, way easier said than done. I mean, just in this one fight, in order to wear down Tony's nanotech self-repairing armor, it took at least nine to 10 hits from Thanos, a dude stronger than the Hulk, being smashed by a freaking asteroid coming in at re-entry speed and blast from the Power Stone. And plus, you can say the same thing for Kang, too. His armor can be destroyed and left useless. So yeah, it goes both ways. I think the final nail in the coffin here, though, is just who Kang is and really who he's supposed to be. He's the big bad now. He's killed countless Avengers. He's beat countless Thors, even. This is kind of what he does. And sure, he lost to this Ant-Man this one time. But everyone can lose a fight one in a million times. I mean, Iron Man should know that better than almost anyone fighting against Thanos like that. But Kang is clearly meant to be stronger and more powerful. His tech is clearly superior. And I think he can beat Tony here. Yeah, I'm pretty confident about that one. Kang wins but what do y'all think sound off in the comments down below i know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure if you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video that's amazing thank you so much for watching and for supporting us and if you want to go subscribe well go subscribe you're gonna see more videos like this one every single week i'll see y'all then i'll see y'all next time